So it's the last day of October today, uh, and that means tomorrow, 1st of November, a um, bit of a change to the deer seasons. We've got uh, red hinds are in, we've got fallow does in, um, and I've come to uh, hopefully get a couple of cull animals. Uh, I've come the night before I'm planning to stalk because it's a piece of ground that I don't stalk particularly often. And I wanted to do some recon because recon knowledge of the ground is always a massive bonus um, wherever you may be doing your stalking. Um, so got a few hours to spare, thought I'd head down early, have a bit of a mooch around and see what's about. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got about two hours before the light goes um, and we're just going to have a steady walk through the woods and, uh, and see what we can see. So about 20 years ago when I started stalking the advice was to spend as much as you could on good quality optics for observation and of course that meant a good scope for your rifle but actually the most important acquisition was a quality set of binoculars because you'd spend 90% of your time looking through your binoculars whether you're up a high seat or whether you're stalking on foot. Um, of course, technology's moved on. Um, night vision and thermal imaging in particular has become an absolute buzz in the stalking sector and shooting in general. Um, we've got the latest Zeiss DTI 450 here um, and we're going to find out just how good that is as an observation tool and whether or not it's actually good enough to replace binoculars. I know a lot of stalkers now might consider a thermal imaging device instead of a pair of binoculars rather than as well as. They're both big financial investments but actually does this do everything we need? Can it replace a pair of binoculars or is it just another really valuable tool for the stalker's arsenal? So I've just come around the corner there onto the ride. Um, instantly picked up heat source in the uh, in the thermal. Um, was able to zoom in. It's a fallow bricket. Was able to identify it, sex it. Um, yeah, even though it's it's quite dense uh, cover here, and initially he was he was quite hidden by the by the bracken. Um, but there's a there's a sweet chestnut up there. Um, and obviously that's quite a useful food source for the deer at this time of year. Um, but yeah, instantly, just as we crept around the corner, have a quick scan and you pick up that big heat source straight away. No messing. So even though we've had a couple of frosts this autumn, um, you can see the bracken is still really, really thick. Um, and so if deer are laying down, it's going to be pretty difficult to see them. Just had a quick scan and there's a group of reds, maybe 100, 150 yards in there. You can just make out heads and ears amongst the trees. So simple to spot them through the thermal, but then trying to pick them up through, even through the binoculars, knowing where they are, quite tricky. And uh, CJ, the cameraman, hasn't got a clue where they are, even though he's been using the thermal to try and get his camera on them really difficult. Never would have seen these if I'd just been scanning with the binoculars but again pick them up instantly using the thermal. <laughs> can see why that fallow deer was uh, particularly pleased to be spending some time in the vicinity of the, uh, the sweet chestnuts here. Good crop this year, some absolute, absolute clonkers in amongst those. Favourite food of uh, of the deer and quite a favourite of me too. Literally just come round onto this, uh, this new patch of forestry at the edge of the pen. There are squirrels everywhere. Um, I mean, you know, there's squirrels there, there's squirrels up the tree, a squirrel just over here. Um, 
you know, so it's not just deer stalkers that are going to benefit from a device like this. You know, if you're into pest control, um, apart from the, some of the, the grey squirrel control in forestry, can be quite challenging, especially when there's still plenty of foliage on the, on the trees and plenty of cover on the ground. This thing picks them out so quickly. Um, and just in a, yeah, in a matter of seconds, you're able to identify four, five, six animals um, at various ranges. I don't know if there's a Monty over there or not. It's quite a big heat signature. Let's see, it's quite behind quite a bit of colour. If you're out here to spot squirrels, you'll be having an absolute field day. There are dozens of them around here. Not so many deer though. That was great. We've been uh, scanning some heat sources over here, turned round, and as is so often the case, a deer had stepped out onto the ride. A really nice big lowland stag. Um, sauntered along, had no idea we were here, had a bit of a mooch about, and he's just tucked off into cover again. Um, but great to see, and interestingly, actually, um, when they're in hard antler, the antlers are not really visible at all through the thermal. Whereas when they're in velvet and the antlers are growing, they've got a blood supply, you can quite clearly see the antlers through the thermal. So just picked up another group of reds down there and they are, I'm saying, 400 yards away, um, good distance. Um, but again, easy to pick up the heat signature. Never quite sure in this environment whether they're gonna be monties or bloody squirrels. Um, at first scan, uh, especially when there's cover involved. Um, but again, it doesn't take long to zoom in, be able to manoeuvre yourself where you know you're not disturbing them, and then get a better look. So, some, some first impressions around usability. Um, it's a lightweight device. It's nicely compact and it fits easily in uh, a coat pocket. Um, it doesn't need a separate carrying apparatus, which you know, personally I prefer. I know some people like to wear a device on a lanyard around their neck, um, easily accessible, uh, and this is certainly light enough to be able to do that, no problem. We've been blessed with some fairly mild weather today, um, but normally if you're out in the colder months over the autumn and the winter and the early spring, you're going to be wearing gloves. Uh, and this thermal is really easy to operate wearing gloves um, you can easily identify the the buttons you can easily use the focus um, you don't have to worry about pressing the wrong thing or stumbling between menu options um, and for me that's a big plus um, startup is okay on this it's not the fastest but it's got a great uh, kind of um, standby setting active standby I think it's called whereby when you're not scanning it turns it into standby to preserve battery life. And as soon as you raise the device to your eye, it switches it back on in a matter of a second or so, and it's ready to go again. Um, and I always used to get a little bit of battery anxiety when I had kind of tech devices. Um, not an issue for this. Uh, the, the Zeiss is, uh, is able to carry about a seven hour charge, which means it's more than enough for even the lengthiest sit in a high seat or the longest, the longest day stalking out and about. Um, you'd probably get two or three outings out of it before you'd need to recharge. Um, so again, you know, it's not, not something that's gonna cause concern. I am a bit of a technophobe. I like devices that are easy to use um, and I like the hard key configuration that's on this, it makes accessing any sub menus very straightforward. Um, the most essential 
operations are all there, easily identified with the push of a button. Um, so you can take a still picture at the push of a button. A longer push of the same button allows you to shoot video. Um, you can easily access the memory. You can easily cycle through the different colour palettes to find one that suits you. Uh, the arrow keys left and right enable you to zoom in from one time to four times optically um, before you even add the picture in picture which boosts magnification still further. So yeah, I, it's simple to use. I haven't had to spend hours reading the manual, haven't had to second guess how to use it. It's been intuitive like all the best technology. So we talked earlier about how Muntjac can literally appear as if by magic and uh, sometimes you get very little warning. Sure enough, that happened, we were just scanning the ride here, saw some movement, initially I thought it might have been a couple of squirrels chasing about. Um, we managed to get still, get in position, get filming and it was a uh, muntjac buck and doe having a chase about um, and they ended up working up to within just a few yards of us. Obviously we were stock still, our faces were covered with the, the cameras and the, and the, and the thermal and uh, they just acted as if we weren't here. Just one of those absolutely magic moments you get when you're out in the field. Um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So uh, the rain's come in, another muntjac wanders out onto the ride. Um, the light's started to go quite badly now. Um, it's getting pretty marginal with the binoculars. Um, and actually, if we only had binoculars, we'd be going home and calling that out for the evening. Um, but fortunately, with this, the light doesn't make a difference. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna have a drive around some of the field edges as the light goes and uh, help with the local deer manager in terms of some population assessment. So uh, just got back to the truck after a really enjoyable couple of hours in, in the woods. Um, you know, talk about uncovering the, the secret life of deer. Um, you get an opportunity to observe their natural behavior uh, in a way that you don't always, um, if you're just using traditional optics, um, you're able to pick up animals that you would never be able to to get a, a look at in heavy cover um, and then took yourself away and, and take some time to observe them i've been really really impressed with the usability of the uh, of the dti 450 some absolutely I, I hope it comes across in the in the finished edit uh, if not you're gonna have to blame me for my shoddy recording but we got some sensational footage up close and personal with uh, with a couple of monties um, we've we've seen big red stags we've seen a massive herd of uh, of reds just come out there's, there's still a couple of stags roaring um they've just come out of the uh, the cover of the forest in uh, uh, and come out to feed um we've seen four million squirrels um and uh, that lovely fallow that we bumped into first of all it's been yeah thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable and i think what it highlights is the, the versatility of the modern thermal imager um, they've got the ability to scan large areas of ground very very quickly um, they've got the ability to really focus in on individual animals um, and, and with the, the modern ones such as this the ability to zoom in uh, and get a good look at, at stuff rather than just that wide angle although having said that you know this has got a 15 yard 100 meter 15 meters 100 meters um, field of view it's very very good for scanning found the controls really user friendly um, the ability to access the menu with a single press and then using a combination of short and long presses to adjust the settings to suit you. Um, I, I kind of think probably only scratched the surface yet and we'll hopefully have a play with some more of the, the functionality tonight. Um, 
but so far, yeah, really, really found it impressive, even in the, the quite heavy rain that we had earlier. Um, you know, I, I know from long experience of using Zeiss products that they are built tough and they cope with uh, the most extreme conditions. We just had a scan round here and there's uh, seven or eight fallow out there. Um, the good thing about using thermal rather than a lamp is it doesn't matter if the deer are facing away, you don't need an eye shine. You've got an instant heat signature, especially on the open fields. It's really easy to, to pick up the animals and to count them accurately. Um, the sensor gives high image resolution, no matter what the zoom level. It gives a better detection range, and it also gives less noise to give a crisper image at higher, higher zoom levels compared to a smaller sensor. As a result, it offers more detailed detection at greater distances. And as we mentioned earlier, this will pick up a heat signature at a range of over 2,600 meters. You can customise a lot of the features on this device as well. Um, that could be from the, the colour palettes you want to use, the, the uh, length of time before the standby kicks in, um, even the zoom speed. Um, yeah, it, once you get to grips with it, there, there's plenty of stuff that you can tweak to make it just so for yourself. So obviously it's, uh, it's a massive advantage to be able to come out and observe nature in a non-intrusive way when the animals are feeling more confident after, after dark. Um, you're not swinging a light round, you're not kind of causing disturbance, you can just tuck yourself away quietly. Um, you can also cover a massive amount of ground really quickly with this, uh, especially if you're in, using it in conjunction with the vehicle as we are tonight. Um, the range of detection allows you to see across even the biggest fields and from a safety perspective you know we've got lots of lots of farm vehicles working around as well you know if you if you were to use this in conjunction with fox shooting it allows you to see where you know where livestock are, it allows you to see where buildings are, it allows you to see where workmen may be, where there's any vehicles. Um, it's just a, a really comprehensive tool, um, user friendly, easy to get along with, um, just, makes, just makes life a little bit easier. So here we are back at the Bothy. Uh, we're about to go and get back to eat, get our head down uh, before we head out stalking in the morning. It's been a really successful afternoon um, checking out the woods and then we've had a good drive around this evening. I um, think we've probably narrowed down where we want to head first thing in the morning. We found some, some fallow does in the areas where we expected to. Um, and we've also had a good look around the rest of the estate and we'll feed the information back from the, the deer that we've seen to the, the deer management team here and they can input that to their census records. Um, the, the DTI 450 has been absolutely faultless today. There's still loads of battery charge uh, left. It's been easy to use even for a technophobe like myself. Uh, and it's just, yeah, it's proved itself to be an invaluable tool. You can see why thermal imaging is so popular with the modern stalker, why it's become an essential bit of kit uh, in their arsenal. Um, would it replace a pair of binoculars for me? Probably not. But as an all-round device, whatever your interests are, whether it is nature watching, whether it is deer stalking, whether it's fox control, whether it's grey squirrel control, they're so versatile, they're so capable, you've got to have one.